the crane, the wolf, the bear and the boar No longer dwell upon these shores You say the goddess and god have gone But I tell you they live on For in the cities and hills And in circles of stone the voices of the old ways The spirit of Albion is calling you home Hi and welcome back to another edition of the British Pantheon this is going to be the last goddess of the British Pantheon, hence the very last goddess that I have for the British Pantheon. If I did not mention your goddess or god during the British Pantheon, I am sorry. Um, I try my best to get the main um, god and goddesses for the British. Um, I hope I did a good job. Anyhow, and again, um, I'm going to pronounce this goddess's name. But if I'm mispronouncing it, don't bite my head off. I try my best to pronounce it. I use translator to say it, and I know they don't do really, really, blah, blah, blah. I know they don't really do a good god, a good job all the time. And her name is Gelish. It comes from the Druid also, so the Druid tongue. So um, anyhow, today is Goddess Nutona. Nutona, Nutona is. Um, the keeper of the sacred grove. I know we had a few keeper of the sacred groves, but she is the main one. And she was used a lot in the Druid pantheons. So anyhow, with no photo ado, here is Goddess Nutona. Here is tattoos on your eyes A story not heard in the bright palace light can only be told as a secret of night The girl in the garden and I From a knife to a lantern and back, back again She closes her eyes and weaves wonders They hang in the air, hold my breath Like a hunter, the girl in the garden you enjoyed the music. Um, the music will be listed in the descriptions and also in the end of the titles. Um, it was called Gore in the Garden. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, Nutuna, that I said that she was worshipped heavily with the Druids, and she is followed heavily um, once a year, a lot of people to get together, a lot of pagans get together at Stonehenge and worship her. Marie on Lamus, on the Sabbath of Lamus. Um, they get together with the Gaddle, and that's supposed to be the area of the Sacred Grove to some people. To others, it's different. But being that of the Sacred Grove, she is goddess of four things. She is goddess of sacred space, spirits, victory, 
battle. Whose sacred animal is a lamb. Whose sacred color is purple. What element is spirit? Whose Sabbath is lamus? Whose social planet is earth? Whose representations is trees? Stones? The Grove and Tree Agate. Her herb and incense is Oak and again a Tree Agate. Now we will talk about her um, here again. Her history is that she is very in love with one person, a guy, we will get to him. But, she is like the guardian, the sacred grove would kind of be like a meet and place of the gods. And she would be in charge of that. Kind of like, you know, you're in my home, so you follow my rules. That is where the goddess, gods and gods go to meet. Um, in some religious, um, in some aspects. But in the British pantheon, the Celtic pantheon in general, that would be a Sabbath, hence why they all gather at Stonehenge a lot. Um, Holgarian goddess of sacred space, that would be nowadays your altar womb. So if you need to cleanse your altar womb and your your father of the British pantheon, even if you don't, she would be a good one to call on. She's goddess of spirits, so if you have problems with some spirits in your house, she would be another good one to call on. Um, victory. If you want victory, like say sports, you play sports. That would be a good one to call her for. Uh, battle. Soldiers, if you're going into battle and I bless you for doing what you're doing. Anyhow, I don't agree with the war. I do support our troops. She or if you have a husband or a loved one that overseas. She would be a good one to call on for battle to make sure that they have victory in battle. And those two go well together. Her sacred animal being a lamb. She always has a lamb in her pendant. The lamb, I don't I haven't came across that animal much. So I'm not sure what that lamb represents really. But her sacred cuddle is purple. And the reason purple is the cuddle for spirit. And the reason that her cuddle would be purple, not only because she is goddess of spirits, but also because her element is spirit. In spirit, the cuddle is represented as purple. Some people would say that her element is air, because she's represented by a lot of candles. I didn't have that in the representations. I'm sorry, I missed it. Um, but she's representing a lot of candles. So if you walk with candle magic, that's another one to use her for. And her associated planet being off, which makes sense right there. Her representations, um, again, representing a sacred grove of lots of trees, stones. You know, tree agate would be great to use, and it's easy to get. Trees were surrounded by them. Even if you're in the city, there are some trees. You could have a tree in your backyard or something, you know. Stones. And any stone will work or fall, basically. Um, herbs and incense, as we talked about oak. Oak trees are really good. And again, a tree agate. Now, um, she is, you know, an old goddess. She would be mainly a crone aspect goddess. Because she has been around forever. Hence why she has no muddle or fodder. Her wife, I mean, sorry, her husband, or lover, was the shining one. God, Loc Locus, uh, 
can't pronounce his name, but he was also known as the Thunder God, and I will list it below here. Now, she had no divine children. Does not mean she didn't have children, but she had no divine children. Well, that's it for Goddess Neptuna. Neptuna. Um, again, I'm sorry if the mispronunciation is wrong. Um, but anyhow, I hope, anyhow, this is the end of the Celtic pantheons in general, and the end of the British pantheon. I hope that you stay tuned, because I got one more pantheon I've been holding back on. It's really important. I really enjoy it. I talk a lot about them. The Norse pantheon. So, please stay tuned for the Norse pantheons. Goddess bless. Bye.